Hello everybody, I got another quick update for you. So this is um, another part of this project, this convention game, are the Barbarians, the British. So this is one division of the Britain army, the British army, and there is going to be another division, the Britain, Ar British army, I guess they're not, they're not technically British, they're Britons. Um, the Britain army is going to have two divisions that look basically identical to this, except I'm mainly going to be using uh, ancient Germans for that other division. Honestly, they're close enough, but um, I already had those miniatures, so I just wanted to use them for this project. So, and this actually is not a totally complete division. What will also be included in this division is a unit of slingers which have just arrived this week. So they'll be, um, yeah, these are actually from Footsore Games Picked or Irish or something. But, um, you know, they're just, that was like the best I could kind of do right now. And uh, I don't really love, you know, the Warlord game stuff is too expensive right now. And I don't, I don't love the Foundry Slingers, to be honest. So the Warlord game, I mean, the Footsore Miniatures, like, I can't remember if I bought the Irish or the Pictish or whatever slingers. They're Celtic, kind of from a later period, but really, how much really changed if you're like a peasant throwing rocks. Um, and they kind of have this wild and woolly, kind of northern frontier look. So I like that. Um, the Britain army, the kind of concept I was going for, um, is an army from the northern part of England from kind of like Lancashire. My grandfather is from Lancashire and my mother was born there. I was at, I was also, you know, I got, I'm living in America, lived here for years and years, decades. Uh, but I was actually born in England too. So my family is from Ireland and that, that northwestern part of England, Lancashire. So I wanted to do uh, my army kind of with a slight Lancashire theme. And from my research, it seems like actually cavalry, especially kind of light cavalry, was really more of their their specialty in that region. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I think the sources are a little slim, but that's the impression I get that they're kind of a light cavalry people. But anyways, there's going to be um, two divisions like this of infantry, and if you compare them to the Roman army... Um, the Romans have more divisions with less troops in. The Celts have less divisions with more troops in them. And I wanted to reflect some of the difficulties of command that these, you know, tribal armies had. Uh, they were not maneuverable. And actually, the To the Strongest rule set does a great job of making warbands less maneuverable than smaller units, but having a little more punch. So, you know... This is an army that is good at charging straight ahead. It's not good at doing much more than charging straight ahead with the infantry. I think having those unmaneuverable infantry combined with all the light cavalry actually makes for kind of an interesting army concept. But anyways, uh, this army is, you know, you got the command here. And most of these figures are just rebased except for the fanatics in blue, which I'll talk about in a minute. But you've got the army command there. Um, a druid with, you know, a noble war leader there, his standard bearer, and a, uh, a horn blower. And I just love this figure. I thought he was awesome. He was, uh, the way I'd originally done this army, he was just a unit leader. But I decided to give him an upgrade, make him a, you know, a local chieftain. Uh, and this is his kind of levy. I think the the plaid cloak turned out pretty well there. The tartan cloak, not plaid, sorry. Or, uh, yeah, I guess it is plaid. What? Plaid, tartan, I guess they're the same things. Um, yeah, I think that that's an awesome... I think these are pretty cool. I think these turned out nicely. But, of course, I painted those a couple years ago. I decided to concentrate all the armored units, all the armored guys in one unit. I do some of the helmets in here are actually Greek helmets, and that's because they're they're also going to kind of double as armored Galatian warriors uh, who were kind of Celts who in, invaded um, modern day Turkey, Anatolia. Okay, so now we've got the regular war bands here, and I do I did these all of unarmored warriors. 
There's, you know, they're mostly Victrix. Um, I did get a couple sprues of the Warlord Games guys on a, um, <sighs> one of the sprue sales they used to do back, like, way back in the before times. Um, and some of those actually have heads, uh, ancient Greek Spartan heads. I bought some of the Spartans on a sprue sale too. Uh, if you buy, like, the command frame, they doesn't have enough heads from the Warlord game. So I, I at the time, that was kind of early in my hobby days, I didn't have the extra heads. So I, I had to put heads from the Greek frame on there. But that kind of fit with them being Galatians, too, I guess. Um, but, you know, they kind of, you know, you paint them right, they just kind of blend in anyways. So, yeah, next Warband. A lot of the, you know, these were kind of contrast-heavy divisions this was right i did these right when contrast paints came out so i used a lot of contrast paints on them the flesh um i don't like the contrast flesh so there's there some of these are contrast flesh most of them are kind of traditional painting flesh um but again my style has actually kind of evolved since i painted these anyways um so i think they look a little dated compared to what i paint now but i still think on mass they look really good actually especially the you know the mass effect this is a an army not a you know small a skirmish project right this is a massive army so these guys i actually did refresh painting and now that i'm looking at them up close the shields do look kind of messy i, I kind of dry brush those but i use contrast paints entirely on these guys so i you know I don't think that looks that great, so I decided to spice them up with some highlighting. Some of these, um, you know, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you've seen some naked guys sitting on the back of my desk for like literally a year. I finally painted those up and added them too. Like you can see that guy, you know, different skin tones. Um, you know, I did different skin tones on them, but I think I think I like the mix. You know, they're. You know, I mean, look, they're all British, but there is a range of skin tones, even just in the native population, right? So I think these guys look awesome. I think the blue doesn't, the shields look kind of messy up close here. I think they look better from a distance. Um, the contrast paints, um, you know, the flesh one I think is mixed. Like, I think you kind of need to add an extra highlight on top of it for it to really pop otherwise it looks kind of washed out i think i might have even you know ended up washing these as well so did the contrast paint save me any time on these like honestly no i don't think it did uh but i love painting these fanatics i've got another army uh another unit of them and in the to the strongest rules these guys work really well as like shock troops and um they're they basically, you know, in that rule set, um, there's not, the way they do casualties is basically you're either disordered or you're not. Um, and I like that because in reality, you know, what kind of throws me off about some games like Warhammer Ancient Battles is like your, your units can get decimated, like lose like 50% of their strength and stuff. You know, units get removed when they're down to five models. You know, they might break before then, but, um, you know, when they're reduced to below five models, they might break before then, but, you know, they'll stay on the table even if they, potentially, even if they get, like, 80% casualties or something. And the reality is, with this, with Ancient Warfare, is that units, like, in the actual fighting each other, like... They, did, they didn't take very many casualties at all, really, as a percentage of the whole. Like, in the actual combat, almost all the casualties are on the retreat. Um, and, you know, I think there have been some studies of ancient Greek warfare. And I think, you know, they find the winning army loses, like, 1% or something. And the losing army loses, like, 10 to 20% at most. I think it's more like 10%. So if your army loses, you really you have like a one in ten chance of dying, basically. Um, which I think some of these rule sets where you're like removing tons of casualties, I don't think that really accurately reflects what the combat was like. So what I like about to the strongest is I like this concept of 
um, disordered versus like... I like that idea that um, what's important is not necessarily like killing lots of people. I mean, I guess that's part of it, but it's about like the integrity of the formations and is your kind of attack, you know, enough to break that formation, I guess. So with those fanatics, basically they never count as being disordered. Um, you know, even as they take disordered, they basically fight at maximum strength until they're destroyed entirely. Which for like fanatical troops, I think that's a really cool way to portray that. It's a good rule. On the flip side, you know, they'll fight and, you know, they fight as if they're full strength as they're not disordered um, until they're destroyed. On the flip side of that though, they actually have a pretty bad save value. So they take casualties easily. And what I've found running the Fanatics, you know, potentially they're a battle winning unit because you can just keep on attacking even when you're disordered and potentially like crush the enemy. On the flip side, they're kind of like the glass cannon kind of troop type. So potentially... You know, they could get wiped out very easily due to their low armor save. And I think that kind of reflects some of the history. Like, the battle I think of the Naked Fanatics really playing a role in is the Battle of Telamon um, in Italy, which is way before the, the time period I'm doing. This is a battle in the Republic. But basically, the, the Fanatics, they're actually kind of scary to the Romans. You know, they talk about, well, these are some, like, intimidating naked guys, these Gisatai, you know, mercenaries. And they are arrayed in the front of the, the Celtic army. But the, the Roman skirmishers basically just wipe them out with missile fire. And the, they don't even do anything. Um, the same thing actually happens in the Battle of Mount Olympus. Which involved the Romans fighting a Galatian army in Greece on Mount Olympus. Again, the Roman skirmishers just shot them all down with missiles. Instead of you know bothering to go to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat with these scary naked warriors. But due to their lack of clothing and armor... They were really vulnerable to those missile weapons. So I think that that actually is really reflected well in this rule set. Um, and yeah, from what I've found, I've, what I've run, you know, sometimes I've run all my units as naked fanatics in like a Galatian army. Um, and what either happens is either it's like a total win, like you have a crushing win, or all your guys just die. Uh, <laughs> you know, it feels like it either goes one way or the other. So, yeah, each uh, each of these infantry divisions is going to have uh, one unit of these fanatics. And, um, you know, they're kind of the shock troops anyways. So this, um, yeah, this is basically a complete division except for the skirmishers. I've got to paint, you know, I've got the fanatics done for the next brigade. I've got the command done, but I need to do one, two, three, four more of these and unlike the um unlike this division which was mostly painted except for the fanatics which i i added onto and those are already kind of partially painted uh the next division i really actually have to paint all four